What's up, friends? Hello. Hello. How are we doing? We doing all right this evening? Things going all right? Yeah, good. Glad to be back. Uh, I am. Um, very excited that The Edge is back. I just want to uh, formally apologize for the cancellation last week. Um, we have a dilemma every time snow is in the forecast, especially with students, and it was calling for like a 80% chance of a wintry mix from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And The Edge is from 6 to 8. So uh, I was thinking, you know, we were thinking as a group, uh, maybe uh, – Maybe not have it, but there was nothing anywhere. So uh, we apologize. That's actually the third time this spring semester. Um, it seems like the only time wintry weather is in the forecast is on Sunday afternoons. Um, in fact, I heard it was just snowing out there, which is awesome. Um, so just want to say sorry about that. There have lit- there's been five weeks this semester where we haven't been here. And that makes it super tough to keep momentum and all that. But you guys are here. We're here tonight. It's going to be great. I'm excited. You're excited. God's excited. Whew, it's going to be good. Um, so we are uh, looking forward to it. If it's your first time here, which I already see some, some new faces, um, we have a couple of announcements for you. You can throw them up on the screen. First off, we would love to meet you outside um, and get some information where we can follow you on social media and all of that and just kind of get you plugged into a small group. Small groups actually go from about 7.05 to 8 p.m. every week where we unpack what we talked about in here. Is that music? Like the fourth, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it sounded good, really good. Um, so, 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 yeah. Go, we'll meet you out there, and that'll be really cool. And then you can follow these accounts on social media if you don't already. You can pull your phone out right now. Follow OBCC students um, on Instagram and also on Twitter. And if you have not yet texted Edge, the word Edge to eight nine eight zero zero, you can do that as well for some weekly updates on what is going on up. Here. Here. Pastor Tony speaking tonight. Yep. Super excited about that. And, and you know what else I'm super excited about is summer programs. Raise your hand if you've signed up for either Varsity Squad or Ob Turns. Okay. Raise your hand if you haven't, but you're interested. You're interested. Okay. Here's, here's, what, I need to, here's what I need to say to you. Okay. Do whatever it takes to get signed up, okay? I mean this with every ounce of my being. Sometimes I forget that I actually went through the summer program myself, and I was just reflecting on it today, actually, and I thought, that was such a crucial summer for me. Like, I became really good friends with a lot of people from the church, and in fact, I'm doing ministry with people tonight that I did the summer program with, and I hope to serve with them for the rest of my life. And I'm convinced that for a lot of us, that wouldn't have happened without the obturnship, okay? So lifetime friendships, and beyond that, your relationship with Jesus will grow. Um, Hopefully, you'll see more of who he is and be exposed to maybe the church in a way you never have. And so we just really, really, really encourage you to sign up. Technically, the price goes up tomorrow. Um, So... Sign up tonight. Um, If you don't sign up, that's okay. There's still time. You can reach out to us, and we'll figure that out. But we need you to sign up. If you have no idea what it's looking like, we're actually going to Lake Williamson in about six weeks. The summer is getting kicked off. It's crazy. And we have a quick little video of what varsity looked like last summer. So if you want to check it out, um, yeah, take a look at the screens.
got I got extra excited about summer programs today. I actually got a, a, a text from one of our college guys, and he, he's like, hey, give me a call. I gave him a call, and he's like, hey, I just want to let you know I am all in for this summer. I want to grow like I've never grown before. I want to lean in more than I've ever leaned in before. And he's like, can you kind of push me, hold me accountable? And I'm like, oh. I just wish the summer was here now. Um, so again, please, whether you're college, high school, middle school, please sign up. It's going to be amazing. And lastly, uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but out there we have a Therefore Go kind of campaign going on. So we have some gear that you can get. And also um, there's a station where you can take your picture. And what that really is, okay, here's what we want to – the Edge is not a separate church from Oak Bridge. It's not like you have Oak Bridge on Sunday morning and the Edge on Sunday nights. We are – fully a part of what God is doing at Oak Bridge Community Church. This is the youth ministry um, of Oak Bridge. And so we want to challenge you and encourage you to lean in to what God's going to do over the next six weeks. I'm sure you guys have heard, but we have Oak Bridge City, our second location that's beginning later this fall, which is super exciting. But in order for that to happen, um, we are going to have a faith building campaign where first and foremost, every single person is just challenged to pray. Um, And what you're praying for is the city campus, for what God's going to do for the community there, but also pray for your own heart um, for the course of this next six weeks, because in five or six weeks, each and every person here is going to be asked, and you don't have to if you pray about it and God says don't give a penny, then that's okay. We'll say awesome, thanks for praying. But everyone's going to be at least invited to give and to give generously and to give cheerfully, believing that God's going to multiply what we bring to reach people um, for Jesus in South City. And so that is the goal of the faith building campaign. So if you're saying, hey, I'm on board for that. I'm going to pray through that. I'm going to think through that. Um, Please go out there and we'll get your picture taken, throw it up on there. And that would be great. And I know a lot of you guys, and this is long winded, but this is a big deal. Middle schoolers, high schoolers, you guys are thinking, I don't have any money to even like pray through or think through. Um, Well, I would say that's simply not true. If you have a dollar, I would say pray about what God wants you to give out of that one dollar. Maybe it's all of it. But I would encourage you to seriously pray, think through it. God says over and over and over again, there's a pattern. If you're faithful with small things, he will entrust you with larger things and bigger things. And so I would encourage you to be faithful now when it comes to um, what God has blessed you with when it comes to um, when it comes to your, your, your money. So I would encourage you, again, just to join in. We're excited for what God's going to do and we're really looking forward to tonight. So if you guys want to stand up, I'm going to say a prayer for us, and then we are going to go to God in worship. Father, we are grateful for every single student in this room and for tonight and for the privilege to meet with the creator of the universe. And I can sense that there's excitement. We are ready to meet with you. And so I just encourage you and, 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 and plead with you to show up and to move in our lives individually in ways that only you can. Speak to us in ways that only you can and allow us to um, not only hear from you, but also respond to what you have spoken in our lives. Help us worship you in the next 15 or so minutes with everything that we have because you are worthy of it. It's in Jesus' name, amen.
Can you guys take a seat real quick? Yes, and can we go to one more time just for this uh, worship team? Yes, amazing. Um, I love those songs. Um, and the reason I say give them a round of applause, and what I love most about, and we don't do this very often, but what I love most about this group up here is that they are just up here on Sunday nights because it's like fun and it's great. In fact, a lot of times on a Sunday night, maybe there would be something else that's maybe a little more convenient to go do, and I'm sure they love it, but... But they don't just do it because they like to play music. They can play music anywhere, right? But they do it because they're privileged to play a part in the story of God. And that's what I love about the song that we just sang. It's this amazing, miraculous story that God has weaved together from the beginning of time that all points to him and to his glory so that the world can know him, so the world can see him, so the world can respond to how good he really is and how great he really is. And I just want to encourage you with that. Like you're invited to the story that we just sang about, the story that has begun long before this world was even created. What a privilege that is. But at times the challenge is, is to, to really stay in it. Let's think especially for middle schoolers, 
for high schoolers to say, you know, I'm going to stay in this story and allow God to work and write whatever he wants to in my journey and my life. And I know for me, at this point in the semester, certain years of high school, I would run and I would hide And it seemed like my life wasn't super connected to the story that God was writing in our world. And so if that's you tonight, which if it is, first off, I want to let you know it's okay. We love you. There's grace for you. But I would challenge you. I would challenge you to to lean in a little bit. The song that we're about to sing, there's a main line that says, come out of hiding. You're safe here with me. And from the beginning of time, I don't know if you've read the story, but we're Adam and Eve, human beings, they fall short, they sin, and the first thing that they do, they feel shame because of what they've done, and it's recorded that they went and they hid from God. They hid from God. They covered themselves, they're afraid, they hid, they were ashamed. And if that's you, I would just challenge you, come out of hiding. I don't know where you're at, I don't know what you've done, I don't know what you're thinking, I don't know where you're at in your journey, but I love that we're about to sing a song that encourages you to step into this story, to allow God to work in your life and to do things that only he can do. And so before we, before we sing this song, before we reflect on these lyrics, I just want to give each and every one of us a moment to pray and reflect on where you're at, where you're at right now, be honest, self-reflective, where are you at in your walk with God? And then we're going to listen to these lyrics together. Take a moment. God, I thank you for the times in my life where, where I've run, where I've run and turned my back on you. And God, I thank you that every time that has happened, you've come running towards me. You've received me with open arms, with joy that only a good father could have as I've come back to you. And God, I know that right now in this room, in this moment, there are people that are running. There are people that are hiding. And I love that this is a community. This is a body of believers where nobody's perfect. Everyone's welcome. Everyone's loved. But God, I pray that you could, you could take us from out of that spot and into the life that you've created us to live. Because what's ironic is when we run to things that are apart from you, when we hide from you, when we hide from the life that you've created us to live, we're really hiding from ourselves We're hiding from our true selves. We're hiding from the people that you have created us to be. And so God, in this moment, I pray that you take what, a song, just five minutes, and I pray that you multiply it, God. And I pray that you do with a song what only you can do. I pray that this can be a holy moment right now in this moment for maybe just one student, maybe multiple students to say, God, I'm gonna take a step out and I'm gonna trust you. And I'm going to step back into the loving arms of a father because, man, with you, we are safe. God, we love you, and we're grateful for second chances and for 50th chances and for hundredth chances, God. And I just pray that that takes place right now in this moment. It's in Jesus' name. Amen.
so much um, for who you are. Um, thank you for what you're doing in this place and through these students, Father. Um, Lord, I just pray that tonight we can have just open hearts and open ears to what you have to say to us, Lord, that we can just tune our hearts um, to your voice. Um, I pray that you just speak through Pastor Tony. Um, and we just love you so much, God, and everything we praise in your name. Amen. All right, let's give it up for the band one more time. Thank you guys so much. Thankful for that. Well, they're getting set up here. I just want to again apologize, like Josh said, for canceling the Edge last week. We thought we were going to have the 2018 snowpocalypse in uh, April, and it just didn't happen. They were calling for it. didn't happen, um, but that's okay, because I'm excited to be back, because we have three weeks left until summer. Like Josh was saying, it's so close to being here, so I, again, encourage you to sign up for that. But also... Um, so we're going to be going over a two-week series starting tonight. In the first week, tonight we're going to talk about something, if we go back a little bit, you guys asked the question six, seven, eight weeks ago, um, how can I hear the voice of God in my life? How do I know it's the voice of God in my life versus maybe my own wants or maybe something from the evil one? How can I discern God's voice in my life? So that's going to be tonight, and next week we're going to talk about um, why isn't God speaking to us. But, uh, and then Josh is going to close us out in the third week with an Easter message. Um, it's going to be Easter at the Edge, because we wanted to have Easter at the Edge the last two weeks, but the snow came and it, uh, you know, ruined that for us. So tonight we're talking about the voice of God, and there have been some voices in my life that have been familiar to me. Some voices I grew up listening to, some voices, maybe they're an actor or someone I saw on TV, but I want to go ahead and just play some of these voices for you, because I think you can relate to them as well. And so I'm going to play like a 15-second clip if, you, if it helps you to close your eyes to visualize who it is, go ahead and do that. But to go along with the, the Voice of God series, we're going to listen to some voices. And when you know what it is, don't ruin it for the guy next to you or the girl next to you. Just keep it to yourself. And after 15 seconds, the clip will be over. I'll say, who is that? And you can go ahead and tell me who it is. So let's go ahead and play that first clip. And it was as good as his word. 
He wrote two letters a week instead of one. In 1959, the state senate finally clued into the fact they couldn't buy him off with just a $200 check. Does anyone know who that is? Morgan Freeman, that's right. Great actor, uh, great narrator. And this is a picture of Morgan right here. Uh, I love his voice. I wish he'd kind of follow me around and just talk behind me. That'd be kind of cool to narrate my life, but he can't. So let's go ahead and play that next voice. Can we turn it up a little bit? People don't become successful just by accident. You know, I mean, maybe the guy uh, that found gold in California and started the gold rush, but don't count on that. That's a one in a, in a lifetime kind of a situation. So you got to really have a specific order to me to have that vision that I want to be Mr. Universe. That's Mr. Universe. Was that a good impression of him? Anyone know who that is? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Here's a picture of him. He was the governor of California, people. He was Mr. Universe back in the day. Very strong, big man. Uh, I have a little bit of a resemblance, I don't know, maybe not, so let's go ahead and play that next voice. Oh, guys, look, I play around a lot, but I have a good time doing what I love, and that's getting help. I'm out of and I want you guys to do the same thing. Guess what, guys? You just been pumped up. I'll give you Should a hint. It it's me. a comedian. <laughs> Kevin Hart, that's right. Really funny. I got two more for us. That's a picture of Kevin Hart, if you don't know who Kevin Hart is. Um, uh, this person, if you're a Netflix fan, you're going to recognize this voice right away, and I'm going to play the whole clip because I think it's a funny line that he delivers to us. Just go ahead and listen. I enjoy having breakfast in bed. I like waking up to the smell of bacon. Sue me. And since I don't have a butler, I have to do it myself. So most nights before I go to bed, I will lay six strips of bacon out on my George Foreman grill. Then I go to sleep. When I wake up, I plug in the grill. I go back to sleep again. Then I wake up to the smell of crackling bacon. It is delicious, it's good for me, it's a perfect way to start the day. It's delicious, it's a perfect way to start your day. Who said that? Michael Scott. Michael Scott, it's from The Office. If you don't know who it is, I don't know if I can really like recommend you guys to watch that though, like I don't know, if you're like a senior, maybe watch one episode, but there's some humor in it, so maybe not watch that one as much. But Herc and Josh have just jumped on board, they're big Office fans now. Kirk actually told me he's saving the last episode because he doesn't want it to be over. So last voice I have for you, there's two. You might have to close your eyes on this because there's a younger voice and an older voice. So just go ahead and try to identify who the younger voice is in this situation. All right, that's grossly oversimplifying things. I mean, why would a girl like some nasty slug anyway? An interdimensional slug because it's awesome. Well, even if she thought it was cool, which she didn't, I, I just, I don't know. I just feel like you're trying way too hard, man. Well, not everyone can have your perfect hair, all right? It's not about the hair, man. The key with girls is just, just acting like you don't care. That's Even right. The key to girls is acting like you don't care, even if you do. That's great. A relationship advice, I guess. Who said that? Steve or... We're going for Dustin on that one, okay? Dustin from Stranger Things. If you didn't know that, we did a Stranger Things series. This is one of the voices, was Dustin. So I'm glad that you guys were able to relate. Most of you guys were able to relate on some of the voices that I, I knew growing up. But there's one that you probably don't know, and that's because you didn't live in my house, so you didn't know my father. My father's voice was one that was very recognizable to me. And most of the time it was because I was in trouble for doing something. Um, I would upset my mom, and, and that was because I was, I was a large toddler. So I'd run through the house, and I'd just run over things and break them. And the majority of them were unintentional. So if something got broken, my, my mom would be upset, and that would upset my dad. And then I'd hear uh, a familiar phrase. Here's a picture of my, me and my dad. Randy... Uh, He's a little smaller than me, I don't know, um, but that's Randy, and uh, he would hear, if I heard this phrase, I knew I was in trouble, and it was, dang it, Anthony. If I heard, dang it, Anthony, I knew I was in big trouble, but it, like, depending on the dang it, if it was like a dang it, I knew it wasn't in that much trouble, but if it was like a dang it, and his teeth were clenched, like, I knew I needed to start running if I was on my A game, because I was going to get a whooping, and if you guys got whooping, some of you guys probably never got a whooping, but I got whoopings growing up, so... <laughs> If I was on my A game, I would start running. And my sister, who was a little bit older than me, she would encourage this. She would say, run, Anthony, run, get out of the house. He's coming. And then I would <laughs> sprint out of the house, run down the street, hide in the closet, whatever I could really do to get away from him. But my little legs couldn't outrun a full-grown man. So my father, uh, yeah, I would <laughs> he would give out some whoopings when I broke something in the house. And uh, rightfully so, I deserved it. So um, Jesus tells us a similar story of some a voice in his life um, and that we understand and that people of uh, Jesus' followers would understand, and that would be his sheep. If we were Jesus' sheep um, and he was the shepherd, his sheep know his voice. And the Bible talks about this in the book of John, 
chapter 10, 14 through 15, it says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father, I lay down my life for the sheep. So what he's saying here is that he, there are sheep. We would be the sheep if we were a Jesus follower and uh, he would be our shepherd and we know his voice. Just like when you come home from work or school and let's say some of you guys have dogs in here. Anyone have a dog? I just got a dog, okay? When you come home and your dog knows your voice and it's excited and it runs to you, it knows your voice. For me, it was my father's voice. I knew my father's voice when my dad, uh, whether he was in the room or not, whether he was on the cell phone, he could have called me and I knew what kind of... Um, what kind of mood my dad was in just based on the conversation. I didn't have to see him. I just knew what kind of mood he was in. Um, And Jesus talks about how his followers know his voice. So my first question to us tonight is how well do we know God? How well do we know God? And that's a question to all of us. And the reason I ask this question, the reason I ask how well do we know God, because if we don't know Jesus, if we don't have a relationship with Jesus, it's going to be really hard to hear from him. It's nearly impossible to hear from him. And the, and the reason I say that is if, if, if we were trying to communicate to each other and we both spoke different languages, you're probably not going to be able to understand what I'm saying. And I'm not going to be able to understand what you're saying. But Josh talked about this in his message a few weeks ago where God's up here. He is perfect and sinless. And we are down here well, because we have sinned. But because of uh, what Jesus did for us, God sent his son and loved us and said, you know, this is going to be the last sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice. You are now going to be made pure in my eyes. You can now stand before me. You can now have open communication with me. And that's for us Jesus followers. If you're not there yet, I encourage you to keep going, ask questions, reach out to your small group leader, and stay on the journey. But for those of us who call Jesus um, our Father, those of us who look to God and we are in that relationship with him, we receive the Spirit. And the Spirit is what allows us to discern the voice of God in our life. And that's where we're headed tonight. How can we tell if what we're hearing is really from God? How can we tell if it's not just what we want in our life or it's something evil coming from somewhere else? How can we really tell that? And the Spirit is a key factor in that. So if you don't know Jesus, it's going to be really hard to hear from him. The Bible talks about this as well in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. So basically what it's saying is like what I was just saying. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, it's going to be really hard to hear from him. It's going to be really hard to understand what God is trying to speak to you because God might be about this and you're not really sure who he is or the character of God or what he's for or against. And he might be trying to speak something to you like, I don't want to do that. That doesn't sound like something that I would want to do because you don't really know him yet. So how can you really want to do the will of the Father if you don't know who he is? And it's not that God's ignoring you, though. I don't want you to walk away from this and think, okay, so if I'm not all the way there yet with my relationship with Jesus, you're saying he's ignoring me? He doesn't want to talk to me? That's not what I'm saying. If we look around us every day, a a term that we use is called general revelation, um, and that is basically, I'll give you a definition of that. It's knowledge about God and spiritual matters discovered through natural means, such as observation of nature, the physical universe, philosophy, and reasoning. What that's saying is if you look around you every day, like we were talking about in the songs just now, if you look at creation, it all points back to a creator. If you look at the moon, the stars, the earth, if you look at your friends, if you look at things around you, everything points back to a creator. And that, in essence, that creator's name is God, and he is the creator, the loving father that created you. And every day he's waiting for you to step out and say, all right, I'm ready, God, to go on this journey. He's saying, look around you. In the Bible, in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 20, it says, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. He's saying, look around you. It all points back to me. I love you so much. There's no excuse that you can't tell that I'm real. Look around you. Look at the stars. Look at the moon. Look at everything that I've put in your life. Look at the people around you, your parents, your family. It's not an accident. We didn't wake up one day and snap. We were just here. No, there's a creator who loves you and is crazy about you. And that's what he's saying here. In eighth grade, I didn't know that. When I was in middle school, if I take myself back to your guys' shoes, I did, not know the, I did not know God as well as I do now. I'm still learning a ton about him, but I didn't know the character of God. I didn't know what he was for or against. And the majority of the time, I would just pray for things that I wanted. I would just pray for things like, if I, I can think of a specific instance when I was in middle school, like I was in this fishing tournament, and I was like, God, let me catch the most fish. I don't think that's a bad prayer. But I also don't know if like, God truly is like, really li- like wanting me to catch the most fish. I don't know if that really like, does anything for God's kingdom. And I'm not saying it's a bad prayer, but or I'd pray things like, let me get an A on a test without studying. I'm not sure if that really affects God's kingdom that much either, but I would just pray for things that I wanted because I thought if I'm for it, then God's probably for it because I didn't really know who God was. So I just figured whatever I was for, if it wasn't hurting anybody, it probably made sense. It was okay to do. I'm going to pray for that. And in eighth grade, I'm going to go ahead and show you this. It never gets old. I had an afro, okay? This was just part of my life. I don't know how it came into existence or why it came into existence. My sister... Uh, 
her friend was a hair salon lady and she did my hair. So that was my hair in eighth grade. But I, I show you this picture because I go back and this was me in eighth grade, not really knowing God that well, not really having a relationship with God and just kind of trying to figure it out where some of us might be tonight, which is great. Um, so I would pray for things, like I said, that I don't really know really concern God that much, but they were, m- mattered a lot to me. And in eighth grade, guys, you might like this a lot. I was in a forbidden relationship. This is a true story. I was in a Romeo and Juliet kind of situation. You guys familiar with Romeo and Juliet? This is the 13-year-old version of that, okay? But this is real, okay? When I, you're like, how are you in a forbidden relationship? Well, I was kind of the bad boy of the school, right? Seventh, eighth grade, walking down the halls as a big kid, and I was kind of the bad boy. And then there's this girl who was smart, and don't worry, I asked Maddie. I could tell this story. My wife, she's cool with it. Seventh grade relationship, everything's golden. So with that said, um, the principal knew this, this girl's mom and said, hey, we don't want, uh, you probably shouldn't let your daughter hang out with him. He's, she's pro- he's probably going to corrupt her somehow. And I'm like, wow, that got back to me. Like the principal called me in his office. Like I told her mom she shouldn't hang out with you. And I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so then I call her house a few days later and we're just friends at this point. And I say, hey, um, you know, is your daughter there? And she's like, who is this? And I'm like, Tony. And she's like, don't call here. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> So then I wait like a week, and like, maybe it was a fluke. I'll try again. So then I call back, and again, don't call here. And I'm like, wow, this is real. So that like kind of angered me a little bit, and it pursued me to make me want to date her even more. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to date her daughter. She says, I can't talk to her. I'll date her. So then that's what happened. She says, yeah, let's be boyfriend and girlfriend, but it came with some stipulations. I couldn't hang out with her in public. Like, we had to be <laughs> in groups. It was like a girl group and a guy group, and I'd be like, what's up, girl? Hey. Yeah, we're dating. I couldn't tell anyone that, though. Only my few of my friends knew, or, you know, I couldn't call her, like I said. Eventually, I got to the point where I was like, I have to talk to her on the phone, because we only had AIM, and AIM was, before texting, it was like texting over the internet, and then they came out with cell phones. But anyway, we were <laughs> texting each other. We couldn't text each other, so I would call her house, and I'd be on three-way with my friend Nick, and Nick would uh, say, hey, uh, you know, is your daughter home? She, Who is this? It's Nick. Oh, okay, cool, Nick. I'll go get her. And I'd be just listening, like, oh, ooh. We got past, you know, got past her mom, and then she'd be on the phone, and I'd be like, hey, can you call me without Nick on the phone? Okay, I'll call you right back. That's how we communicated for, like, the entire six months of our relationship. I'd have to call Nick first, and Nick would have to call her mom, and I was like, wow, this is a great relationship, seventh grade relationship. This has got to be from God. This is awesome. So one night in particular, I remember she called me, and she said, hey, my parents are going out to dinner night. You should totally come over, and I'm like, yeah, I should. That'd be fun. You know, seventh grade, I get to finally hang out with you, my girlfriend. This is going to be awesome. So um, you know, she's like, wait 20 minutes and then come over because if they forget something, they're going to catch you trying to come over to my house walking down the street. And I was like, all right, I'll be there in like 40 minutes. I don't have a car. I'm 12. So I'll just ride my bike. <laughs> so I ride my bike over to her house. It's pretty far. And the whole time I'm just praying, God, please let tonight be the night we, I get a kiss. This is going to be it. I'm going to get a kiss from my girlfriend. That's what's going to happen tonight. And that was my prayer the whole way there. And I was like, God, you are good. You created this moment in time. <laughs> It's going to happen. We're going to kiss. You know, it's going to be awesome. So sure enough, I get there. Long story short, short I'm just nervous the whole time because every time you hear a creak, you think it's her parents walking in the front door and you're ready to run. And they didn't come home. I got a kiss and the whole way home, just fist bumping like, yes, God is good. He has granted my prayer. And I'm going to end the story there, but I'm going to pause there. And we're going to come back to that because there's two pastors that are way wiser than me. Um, one is the Hillsong uh, pastor down there, and then the other one is uh, from Saddleback, and they dug through some scripture, and they came up with a list of some checkpoints that we can run something, a hunch, an inkling, something we feel like God's trying to communicate to us. We can run it through this list and really check if it's from God or not. So we're going to run my relationship through that and see if it was really a God-honoring relationship. You might already know the answer to that, but we're going to see what it really is like to hear from God or what we can, we can do to, to find that out. So how do we know it's God's voice we're hearing? Number one, is it consistent with God's word? Is it consistent with God's word? If you're not really sure, I would challenge you to start reading your Bible. If you don't know, like, I don't know if this really aligns with what God's trying to to tell me or not. I just feel like he's telling me I should do this or do that or or not say that. Is it consistent with God's word? Sometimes on the news we hear, like, somebody killed someone and God told me to do that. I don't think that was from God. I don't think God's going to tell you to do something that goes against his word, something that's evil. Number two is, will it make me more like Christ? This is something we need to pray through. Is this going to make you more like Jesus? When you think about the life of Jesus, how, how did he act? What did he do? He put others first. He was a servant. He loved like crazy. He ultimately died for us because he loved us so much. Is this going to make you more like Christ, or is it going to pull you further away from him? I don't think God's going to ask you to do something that's going to make you less like Christ or pull you further away from a relationship with him. That would not be from God. Number three is, do my family and friends confirm it? This one, an example of this, 
um, would be you have people in your, play, in your life that God has put there, family, friends, people that are wiser than you, small group leaders. So if you're not sure about this, if you've prayed about it, you think it's consistent with God's word, you're not really sure, you're on the fence, have you reached out to friends and family? Have you said, hey, here's what I'm wrestling with. I think maybe God's calling me to do this. I'm not sure. Is this crazy? I don't know. And, and so maybe that's something you need to look at. And an example of this would be if you were in, like for me, I was in a relationship and my friends didn't really confirm it because I didn't really have any wise friends at the time, but I don't think God would want me to go through something alone. I don't think he created us to do life alone. He didn't want you to go through struggles or even blessings alone. He wants you to enjoy them with others because he didn't create us to do life alone. So if you were in a relationship, or there's something that you're doing right now, and you're like, I just don't feel like I can tell anybody about this, but it's from God, like he's allowed it to happen, he wants it to happen, but I just don't feel comfortable telling people about this, the way that he treats me or she treats me. I just, I don't know if that's from God. I don't think God would be for you keeping these secrets to yourself that are harming you or that are causing you just chaos in your life. That wouldn't be from God. Number four, is it consistent with how God shaped me? I like this one because it makes me think, I'll just use an example of, if you're a high school student and I can relate to football, so if you played a sport, and that's the gift and passion God has equipped you with. Because all of us have been given a gift and a passion for something in life. There's something that we really excel at, that we're really interested in, whether it's video, photos, sports, there's something that you're really good at that you've been created uniquely just for yourself to do, that God is gonna use you, he has equipped you to reach others for his, for his son and for his kingdom based on the skills he's given you. So is it consistent with how God shaped me? So if you came up to me right now and you're like, hey, I'm, I'm really good at football, but I just feel like God's called me to join your book. He wants me to quit the football team. I'm a terrible speller. I can't take pictures very well. I don't, not really that passionate about it, but there's this person on the yearbook team who I don't think they know Jesus, so I'm just gonna quit my life and just go for it. I'm just gonna do that. I'm not saying God won't call you to do some things that are difficult. I'm not saying he's not gonna put you in some situations or allow you to be in situations that are gonna build you up, because he's gonna. So there's gonna be things in your life that are difficult, but he's gonna use those to build your character and to make you stronger. But I don't think he's gonna call you to quit something that you're really good at and you're really passionate about. Another example would be if you're like, I think I wanna drop out of high school, never been on a mission trip, I don't really like kids that much, but I think he wants me to start an orphanage in Africa. I think that's what he's called me to do. I just wanna quit high school and go move to Africa. I'm like, that's great, but do you like sleeping outside? Um, are you passionate about children? Like, not that an orphanage in Africa is even a bad thing, because that's a great thing, but is that really what God's called you to do? Has he really equipped you to do that? Have you been on a mission trip yet? Have you, have you tried it out yet to even see like, okay, I think God is speaking this to me. So I would challenge that if you feel like it's not consistent with how God's created you. And again, like I just said, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, 6 through 7, God's given us gifts. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. So number five, is it convicting rather than condemning? Is what you're feeling, you're being prompted to do, is it convicting versus condemning? And I'll give you, conviction would be something healthy. For us Christ followers, those of us who put our trust in Jesus, we would say conviction would be something healthy, a holy discontent. We feel like God's spirit's in us saying, hey, let's re-examine this part of your life. Let's look at this a little bit differently, this action that you've been doing or this relationship you're in or why you continue to go back to what you, you know you shouldn't be doing. Is it convicting? Is it healthy? Is God challenge you to look at that? Or is it, or is it condemnation where it's just, you, why would you do that? Shame on you. You're a horrible person. Is that what you're feeling? Because that's not from God. Condemnation is not from God. He's not trying to shame you away from a relationship with his son. He's not trying to make you feel horrible about what you did last night or what you did last weekend. That's not him. He's, he's waiting for you to come back to him and he's saying, let's change this. Let's work on this. Let's go through this together. I'm not gonna set you up for failure because I love you. And number six, the last one we can run this through is do I sense God's peace about it? Everywhere Jesus went, he was never in a hurry. He was never running. He was never rushed. He was never, I gotta be there right now. Do it today, now, gotta do this. That wasn't the lifestyle of Jesus. He was slow where he went. He took time and rested. He prayed. So if, if you feel like what you're, you need to do or you feel like God's telling you to do something now, do it now. Don't think. Just don't pray. Just go, 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 go. That's probably not from God. God's going to ha have you pray about it. He's going to have you seek wise counseling. He's going to have you look to your friends and family and say, does this sound like something I should be doing? He's not going to rush you into a decision that's going to hurt you. So if we go back and go back to my relationship that I was just talking about, the forbidden relationship, and we run it through this ringer right here, just these checkpoints, is it consistent with God's word? I don't know, probably not. What does the Bible say about honoring your, your mother and father? It says you should do that, and is lying to them, sneaking behind their back, honoring them? No, it's not. Uh, if you're trying to go over to your girlfriend or boyfriend's house, just one-on-one, -on -one, 
Uh, you're probably not just sitting there thinking, we're just going to hold hands. That's what we're going to do. I'm just going to sit here and hold her hand. It's going to be awesome. No, your mind goes other places. So what would the Bible say about sexual immorality? It would say flee from it. So right off the bat, no, it's not consistent with God's word. Will it make you more like Christ? Does lying, cheating, going around parents' backs make you more like Christ? No. Do my family and friends confirm it? I didn't really have any wise counseling, so I don't know. Was it consistent with how God shaped me? No, I was lying. God didn't make me out to be a liar and, and to go around and just do things I know I shouldn't be doing. So we can just stop there on that. But as you can see, we can run that through this, these checkpoints and see, wow, I now know looking back, it's funny now because it's like 13, 14 years later. Like that was funny because there's a forbidden relationship. You're like, how did you get in a Romeo and Juliet relationship? It just happened. I don't know. But it's funny now because I, I realize that God's probably only allowed that to happen so I could talk about it today. So I could look to you guys and say, look, there were some serious roadblocks in my life that I, didn't, I missed because I didn't know God. I didn't know what he was for. I didn't know his character. And because I didn't know, that, know who he was, I totally missed the roadblocks. I mean, it was so clear. Tony, you can't talk to her on the phone. You can't go out in public with her. No, you shouldn't date her. What do you mean? Like, look at all, like, I'm trying to help you out here, man. I just totally missed it. Instead, I thought, wow, he's orchestrated this moment in time where I'm going to get a kiss. I was totally oblivious to what God was trying to say to me in my life and saved me from a lot of regrets. So my question as we're wrapping up tonight is when we're, when we're praying, when we're thinking about what's God's will in our life is, we need to make sure that we're praying for God's calling over our own wants. We need to make sure that we're looking at God's calling and, and not that praying for things that you personally care about is bad because it's not. Because not, I think it's great to pray about small things, large things. Maybe it's a healing in your life for someone who's sick. Maybe it's just school. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's, I don't know where I want to go to school, God. Can you just give me something? Can you give me something to go off of for maybe the seniors that are struggling with that and thinking summer's coming up? I need to know where I'm going. Well, maybe just pray for God's calling. Maybe pray, God, your will be done. Let me honor you the best with this decision. Am I going to make horrible decisions if I go away, or am I going to make horrible decisions if I stay? Do I need a fresh start, or do I need to stay here and work on my relationship with you? And that's something you'll have to battle with. But Make sure that what we're looking at is God's calling over our own wants. Because it could be easy, like I said, when I was in middle school, just to pray about whatever I wanted. Just, this is what I want for my life. It doesn't matter who it affects. It's about Tony. Versus what, what's best going to reach people for God's kingdom? What can I do with the gifts and talents God's given me to make disciples who are going to return, go and make disciples? So my last question before we pray is, what's holding you back from speaking or hearing from God today? What is holding you back from speaking or hearing from God today? Is it something that you've been doing in the past? Is it something that you continue to go back to and you're thinking, God doesn't want to talk to me? I'm too ashamed to even look to God. I'm too ashamed to even open my eyes or even open my mouth to pray to God. I don't even want to think about it because of what I've done. Is it a relationship that you're in that you know you shouldn't be in that you need to get out of? Is it a decision that you, you can't stop making over and over again, but you know it's, it's not right for your life? Or are you just feeling shame because that's not from God? God's not trying to shame you away from him. There's a difference. There's conviction and there's shame. Is, is God trying to convict you and say, hey, I love you. Come back to me. Repent and turn to me. Which repent just simply means turn away from what you're doing and turn back to the Father. What is it that's keeping you from speaking or hearing from God today? So I want to challenge you guys to come back next week because tonight we, we had some practical things that we talked about. I'll go back to that list. We talked about <clears throat> it being consistent with God's word. Will it make me more like Christ? Do my family and friends confirm it? Is it consistent with how God shaped me? Is it convicting rather than condemning? Do I sense God's peace about it? And that's great. And maybe for some of you, you're like, okay, well, I've been a Christ follower for like five years, six years, three years, and I feel like God hasn't talked to me in years, Tony. Why isn't God speaking to me? Tonight we learned how he, if it's from God or not, but next week we're going to go over how can we tell, why isn't God speaking to us? Why does it feel like God is absent in our lives? And I'm going to go ahead and pray for us. Dear Lord, just thank you so much uh, for your son. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Uh, who made nights like tonight possible, who ultimately laid down his life for us so that we can have conversation back and forth with you, Lord, that we can look to you when times get tough. We can look to you uh, when things aren't going the way that we had planned, and we can just reach out, Father, and we can just cry out and thank you. And when we're happy versus we're sad, either way, Lord, we can look to you and know that you have a plan for our life. You have equipped us, Lord, and we thank you for that. And we just pray that you make that known to us, that through our leaders, through people at church, through people you've surrounded us with, Father, to do life with, that they reach out to us, that they build us up. We thank you for that. And we also pray um, for this summer. We pray that if, if, I just pray for the student in here that is on the fence, Father, that joining a summer program is going to be worth it. And you know that, Lord, because you have prepared it in advance for them. You know that this summer that we are going to honor you, we are going to worship you, we are going to dive deeper into your word and learn more about who you are, but we're also going to have a lot of fun, Lord. 
We were going to have a ton of fun worshiping you and doing life with you. And I just pray for the students in here who are on the fence, who don't know yet uh, whether this is all real yet, and they're still trying to figure it out and check it out and figure out who you are. And I pray for them, and I, and I thank you for the ones who have been on the journey for a while, and they just need to be revamped, Lord. I just pray this summer and tonight and the next few edges that we can do that. We can revamp our energy for you. We can go back after it. We can continue to search after you. We continue to love you. So thank you, Father, so much for who you are and what you've done tonight at the edge. Amen.
in worship. Um, sometimes I want my heart to be there. I want, I want my heart to be there with the lyrics and uh, to really surrender all, but sometimes I'm just like kind of holding back. And there's some things that we can do that actually help. Uh, there, there's something about when our outward our outward lives, our outward selves are actually reflecting what's going on in our heart. And so if you guys were just singing with us, we were just singing that Jesus, Lord, I will pursue forever. I will pursue you won my heart and Jesus, I surrender. So we're going to sing a song that's an old song, uh, but it's a powerful song. And I just pray and ask and encourage all of you that if you're there, if you're on the fence, that you just, you just give it all. So I've never really done this before, but if you're comfortable, would you just raise your hands in a sign of surrender that my life is yours, Jesus. Would you just do that with me right now? We're going to sing this song, and I just pray that you guys give it all. Give it your all. Is it good to be here tonight? Yes, so good. Uh, loved it. Hey, quick announcement, big announcement. We have two more edges after tonight for this whole semester, and then we break for summer, which is pretty wild. And so please make a commitment to be at both. We're going to try and do them real big. So invite all your friends, and I hope you guys have an amazing small group talking about how you can hear from God. You guys are dismissed.